depressing news from the industrial sector. OT security budgets do not keep up with the vastly increasing cyber risk. Rather than pumping money into technology and services to counter the threat, most companies ignore what cybersecurity experts have identified as potentially disastrous. OT security budgets have been reported to stagnate at a low level and often put those fighting the fight against hackers and evil nation-states below the poverty line. According to sources, OT security efforts in most companies are so hopelessly underfunded that they will never yield any meaningful results. What's going on here? Why are companies not increasing their spending proportionally to the increase in threats and risk that we constantly hear about? If threats increase almost exponentially, like a hockey stick, Shouldn't we expect to see a matching increase in OT security budgets? Instead, asset owners outside of regulated industries are mostly sleeping it out. Wake-up call after wake-up call remains unheard. Is top management not getting it? Are they unscrupulous? Or are they following some hidden agenda that we don't know about? Let's find out. Here is some Economics 101. In order to decide if anything is priced appropriately, we have to compare it against the perceived value that the customer expects to gain. For OT security, this would be a risk reduction, right? As everybody viewing this video knows, risk is defined as cost of consequence times likelihood. What's the likelihood for a given organization to experience a cyber attack against their OT infrastructure? Most business professionals apply the backward-looking perspective from the insurance industry when determining risk. Analyzing the frequency and distribution of events in the past allows us to generate predictions about future events. If we apply this approach, as many people in corporate functions do, the likelihood that your organization will suffer a cyber-physical attack is close to zero. How can that be? Well, simply because in the history of industrial automation from the beginning of time, all over the world, there were only three undisputed major cases on the record. Stuxnet, the cyber attacks against the Ukrainian power grid in 2015 and 2016, and the Triconex attack which didn't actually cause damage because it was detected early. This is such a low number that the average person has any right to dismiss the whole thing as irrelevant, at least for the time being. It is also the reason why OT security vendors have made it a habit to include non-OT related cyber attacks and cyber related events in their marketing collateral in order to make the situation look worse. I told you a long time ago that you shouldn't apply the concept of risk to OT security. No joke, this is actually possible and I have explained elsewhere how it is done. If you do frame the topic as risk related, you will find yourself caged into the backward thinking approach to risk that calculates likelihood based on past events, which in our case leads to a likelihood near zero. How can we counter this? We can argue that the cost of consequence of a cyber physical attack can be so disastrous that organizations need to do something about it, even if the likelihood is minimal. Many vendors in the space suggest that a cyber strike against your OT systems can be catastrophic. Hence, buying their wares for a sizable dollar amount appears to be a good deal. What these vendors forget, or what they hope you don't realize, is that cost of consequence in itself comes with a likelihood. So far, we had discussed the likelihood that your organization will experience a cyber attack on OT at all. When we look at cost of consequence, the likelihood question doesn't go away, since not all credible attack scenarios lead to a catastrophic outcome. 
some may just result in a nuisance. The question now becomes, if we experience an OT attack, how likely is it that cost of consequence will be huge? Would it perhaps be more likely that cost of consequence is going to be minimal? Again, for OT, we don't have data to answer this question in any quantitative way. The good news is that for IT, we do have it. I would like to draw your attention to the IRIS 2020 study by the Scientia Institute. They have looked at 56,000 public cybersecurity incidents, including data theft, ransomware infections, DDoS attacks, lost or stolen laptops, across 35,000 organizations over 10 years. Now, that is some impressive database. The results show that projected cost of consequence is not the extreme cost that you see in the field. Incidents with extreme cost are so rare, a statistical outlier, that their likelihood is very low. But it gets more interesting. You would probably think about using the arithmetic mean as a good measure for projected cost of consequence. But you would be wrong. How come? The arithmetic mean for our data set would tell you that the average cost of a breach is around $20 million. A lot of money. However, this number would be highly misleading because the vast majority, 90% of all breaches are below this number. For this reason, it makes more sense to look at a different statistical indicator, the median. The median is the value separating the higher half from the lower half of a data sample. For the data set in question, it leaves us with a cost of consequence of roughly $200,000. Note that in the graphic, the x-axis is logarithmic, meaning that every tick indicates a tenfold increase. $200,000, that's not much. For the sake of the argument, let's work with this number and examine what it tells us about an appropriate annual cybersecurity budget. And even if you want to put a higher price tag on your projected cost of consequence, the following elaborations will still be valid. Put yourself in the shoes of a C-level executive for a minute. Staying in the context of the data presented earlier, let's assume you project a potential loss due to cyber attacks of 200k in the next 12 months. This given, what would be a reasonable budget for cybersecurity? A simple mind would probably think, as long as you stay below 200k, you are fine, as you have essentially saved the company money. Let's assume your OT security budget is 199k then your return on investment would be $1,000. Why leave that money on the table? Because it's plain stupid, that's why. It's stupid for two reasons. While the 199K that you invest is gone with 100% certainty, the 200K loss for the cyber attack doesn't have that same certainty. Maybe you will get attacked, but not this year. Certainly not every year. For IT, we even have data for this. 75% of the organizations that had reported cyber incidents only reported one incident over a time span of 10 years. 75%. This means that you could end up in a situation where your OT security investment will cost you more in the long run than any actual cyber attack would have, and it could easily be 10 times as much. Another reason why you can't book the delta between cost of consequence and mitigation cost as ROI is because OT security measures are not perfect. Who says that all the mitigation that you have put in place is 100% efficient in blocking the attack? That's totally counterintuitive, particularly in the area of OT security. Focus on ICS detection products, for example. What evidence do we have that these products will detect a cyber attack with 100% reliability and will also give you enough time to act on the alert so that you can neutralize the attack before any harm is done? I would say not much. The bottom line is that a sober executive doing the math 
would not consider spending anywhere near our postulated 200k mark on OT security. Is OT security a lost cause? Maybe if we as the OT security community fail to do a better job at marketing. Here is traditional OTSEC marketing wisdom. Try to convince asset owners that a cyber attacks against OT are constantly rising, even in a hockey stick fashion, and b that the cost of consequence is disastrous. If that is the case, investing in OT security sounds like a good business decision because it will help you to avoid disaster, bankruptcy, loss of life and limb and so forth. It's a basic scare tactic for which there is, unfortunately, no empiric evidence. And experience shows that it didn't work out that well because the proposition just isn't credible and cannot be backed by empirical facts. An alternative would be to lower the price of OT security products and services in the interest of better cost efficiency. How about that? Actually, it's not possible because the bulk of OT security vendors is not profitable. If you have followed the various acquisitions of OT security startups over the last 12 months, you will have noticed that acquisition prices remained far below expectations. OT security pioneer Next Defense, a self-proclaimed global market leader founded by the legendary Mike Asante and others, was equipped with more than $8 million venture capital when they closed shop after being acquired by Dragos and their software being given away for free. Certainly not something you would do with a successful product that's just flying off the shelf. What do we learn from this? OT security vendors cannot lower price as long as they struggle to become profitable. Quite an uncomfortable situation in a market niche where about 30 companies offer pretty much identical wares and compete for the same dollar. The solution that I see for the dilemma is that OT security must become more efficient. It must become lean. We must be able to convince customers about a return on investment that is not limited to reducing fear as some psychological condition. We must demonstrate value in hard currency right now, right here. How can this be done? Well, you can easily figure out what we are doing in terms of lean OT security by examining our marketing collateral. But I think there are many more ways that are still left to be figured out by creative marketing experts. The bottom line, in my opinion, is that the OT security market will not take off unless we get rid of the fear tactics that have failed miserably and for good reasons. So that's my opinion on why OT security is viewed as too expensive and what can and should be done about it. Tell me your opinion in the comments below and share this video so that we can have a broad discussion.